Hi everyone, my name is Odi and today we are going to look at how to set up your F# -sharp environment for software F# -sharp software development. Um, I'm going to show you lots of the tools I use on a day-to-day -day basis to do my work and you know how it gives a very good, you know, F# -sharp, uh, experience from both editing and in the next video we are going to look at like debugging and stuff like that. But in this video we're just going to focus on setting up the environment, getting everything in order, getting everything you need in place. For starters, what we need is .NET, right? So we say dot, dot .NET, very simple URL that brings us here. And in this dot, dot .NET, you just simply download dot .NET Core and you're done. So you can come here and download either the runtime or the SDK, okay? Now, the SDK is useful if you're doing development. If you wanted to like deploy an F-Sharp application or you wanted to deploy a .NET Core application, not just F-Sharp anywhere you like, you would simply use this, uh, the .NET Core runtime. However, if you are developing the application, like you're compiling, building, and all, all of that good stuff, you just need the .NET Core SDK. If you're using Visual Studio, then you should pick this, but uh, we are not going to use Visual Studio for this. So we just need the .NET Core SDK. So we just click and download that. I have already installed that locally on my system. The installation is very straightforward. Just click next, next, you're done. All right, so this is the new Windows terminal that I use as well. Um, you can get that from the Windows Store. So you can just go to Store and just search for Terminal here, okay? And yeah, you can download the Windows Terminal. It's currently in preview, but it, it works really well. Okay. Uh, while well, I'm waiting for that to get up. Yeah. So once you have the terminal, it's really nice. If you're on Windows, if you're on a Mac or Linux, th then obviously this doesn't apply to you. But if you're on Windows, it can be, you know, a godsend, if you will, because it makes life a lot better, easier. Also, you typically want to be using PowerShell if you're on Windows, but I'm just showing you, you know, what I use locally. But if you're on Mac or Windows, you can, uh, you can ignore this. Uh, PowerShell is also cross-platform, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, once you've launched your terminal, all you just need to do is just type .NET and you will see the different things you can do. So .NET Info, .NET Info gives you all the information you need. Okay, this is the SDKs that are installed. These are the runtimes that are installed, and so on and so forth, right? And just to round it out, you can use .NET New, and it will show you all the different kinds of applications you can start, right? This is just to prove that .NET is installed. Next up, we need VS Code. So just search for Visual Studio Studio Code, right? And that takes you to Visual Studio Code's page. It's really, really awesome. You just simply download it and you are done, right? Uh, you can get for Windows, for Linux or Mac, as the case may be. And that's about it. So once you have v VS Code installed, all right, so this is what it looks like. You have uh, VS Code here and this, you know, you can customize it in many, many ways. You can use Control P to launch the a command bar very very helpful you can just press question mark and it shows you all the different things you can do go to symbol go to namespace blah 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 but for today we just want settings right we just want to get to the settings so to do that we get to settings and then if you notice my um sidebar this bar if by default it will be on the left but in my own case it's on the it's on the right to change that you just um search for sidebar sidebar right sidebar location you can specify left or right if i wanted it on the left pick this but i want it on the light on the right okay all right so that's how to install vs code but with vs code alone you can't really do much with it so you need extensions and that's where the extension is coming the extensions you need to do f sharp development it's an extension called Ionite, right? So you pick Ionite F Sharp and you can install these three Ionite F Sharp, Ionite Packet, and Ionite Fake. Okay. To get these three installed, all you just need to do is just uh, click install. I don't need these two, but 
just click the install button and you're done so once you have these three i'll get to what packet and fake are in a moment but you just install the the um, all three once you have that um let's get to packet so for packet just search for packet and that brings you to the packet home page now at the packet home page you just simply say i want to get it from nuget and just wait a little good it shows you this just copy the this thing just paste it here and as you can see same packet is already installed so what that gives you is this new command line tool called packet and once you use it you can quickly you know just see the execution immediately let's head back um the next thing we need is fake so what packet is is it's a package manager for dotnet um in my opinion it's a better pack package manager and it really works well with uh, f sharp f sharp scripting in particular so um yeah this is how you install the packet tool and you will see that many f sharp projects already use packet in some way shape or form so this is very very helpful the next thing we need is we need fake so to get fake we simply search for fake dash cli and it takes us to the nuget and all we just need to do is just copy this as well head over to our console and install it that way and the fake cli is already installed so what this gives you is just the fake command okay now that we have uh, fake and packets installed the next thing we need is to just open a simple folder i've already created an intro so once you've created a new folder all you just need to do is to right click say new file um you could just say intro.fsx because fsx is the f sharp script files or fs if it's part of a project but we're just going to stick with fsx for now once you create an intro to fsx as you can see it's completely empty and we can start typing f sharp code immediately right so we just say f sharp print f hello world right and once we execute it oops sorry to execute it you use alt enter and it executes and you can see the output here hello world right hello world but if you notice a, the f sharp interactive is on the right to fix that i'm sorry rather to put it that way you just come here and search for terminal and you can specify that you want it at the bottom okay or so if i if i use a control and um back tick so control back tick brings out the console so this is how it will be by default but if you don't want this if you want it i kind of prefer it on the side for scripting purposes so you just pick that you want it on the right you close it and open it back and then you have this okay now um what is this terminal window we're talking about so this is the f sharp interactive when you like you know you can type code here so i could say um let a be two let b be three and let c be equal to a plus b it's a very simple um f sharp program if i highlight it alt enter you can see that it shows you um the the code essentially comes here it executes and shows you the outcome here right but this is like compile time this is like runtime so here i could say sim c plus one and just use double semicolon it shows you six i could say what is a plus two a plus two plus b plus three double semicolon that's how you terminate statements in in the f sharp interactive and as you can see it's saying 10 okay so um this is essentially you know um f sharp how you use how you can use f sharp quickly get started with scripting and whatnot now the final thing we need to look at is uh, the font and the ligatures right so in f sharp um f sharp has a lot of operators very nice operators like for example i could say one two three or rather i could say 
from 1 to 5 right um, list dot reverse right just to reverse the list and if I do this you can see that the list is reversed this special operator is called the pipe operator it allows you to essentially take a function and pass it blah blah blah, blah. I don't want to get into that but the point is that it looks like a triangle right and the reason it looks like a triangle it's actually just a space and a forward angle right it's not a triangle and the reason it looks like a triangle is because you simply first of all it's it's tied to the font and it's also tied to the font ligatures feature in vs code so let's start with the font the name of the font is called fira code so we just come here so fira code and in fira code you download the font it's very straightforward and simple just come here click download and once you've downloaded the font let me see i think i, I probably already have it but okay yeah so once you have the font um what you need is you can just get the ttf um if you're on mac or linux you could use either the eot or the otf or whatever but the ttf is what you need and then um once you've downloaded the font to a particular folder okay maybe i should i should just do that okay so this is the fura code obviously and all i simply need to do would be to come to the ttf copy the just double click each of them one by one and click install on windows on linux you may need to copy this to your font folder or whatever but once you have the font installed the next step is to now configure that font in via in visual studio in vs code so all we just need to do here is come to font and you can see that i've already set fira code all i just needed to do was to add fira code in front of these ones right and then i now had to enable font ligatures so these are the two changes you need to make and once you make them you now get this nifty tool it's really good it even does things for you like so for example if i were to pipe this to sequence.map font x goes to x times x so if i'm squaring it right and as you can see even the arrow as well has this nice um it, it makes it a lot a lot more readable in my opinion anyway so yeah um i hope i've been able to show you how to set up uh, vs code ionite font ligatures fake packet and all the tools that i use on a day-to-day -day basis this will be this video is like an intro so in the next video i'm going to show how to do like regular development how to do debugging stepping through breakpoints and so on and so forth but at this point i won't stop here and you know give you like a, a overview of all the tools i used to do proper f sharp development you can use it to develop web you know console apps and so on and so forth right so that's it so i hope this video was helpful um if you like this video please subscribe um give me feedback i leave lots of feedback i'm still trying to you know get this ball rolling so if there's anything you'd like me to know just hit me below in the comments below and i'll take uh, good care of it so thanks and uh, bye